This is Championship Wrestling from Hollywood! I'm Matt Stryker, and I was requested to be in this ring. My guests at this time have demanded that the entire arena please stand for their entrance. I've been instructed to simply wait for them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Fresnick and Todd Kennelly here at Ringside Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Matt Stryker, of course, in the ring, and here comes the revolution, TK. How about that? Demanding that everybody stands at attention. These guys have been making waves, and they've got something to say. No doubt some more propaganda from the revolution. Gentlemen, what's in that cigar? That doesn't smell like cigar. <laughs> Gentlemen, you've demanded this time. The spotlight is yours. I want to ask, what's taking you so long to finally interview us? It, it's not up to me, it's up to the fans and it's up to the management. What do you mean it's up to them? They have no say. They have no say. You're Matt Stryker, aren't you? Gentlemen, with all due respect, this is still the United States. This is still a democracy. Let me tell you about the United States. You people. You people, you need your Uncle Sam to give you handouts. You need your big brother to watch over you. And you need your mommy to hug you and tell you you are special. But the revolution, we do not deal in such lies. You see, we deal only in truth. And the truth is, all of you people here, you have a choice. And that choice is, Comrade Fidel. Embrace us or face us. And if you do face us, know this, you will lose. Oh, wait a second. That's Eric Watts, TK. Last time we saw him, he took a cigar to the eye from Che Cabrera. Oh my goodness, Big Nasty is back. And there you see the results. Yeah, that eye oh, wait, patch. Wait, oh, he takes it off. He threw it off. Eric Watts is all over the revolution. Just manhandling him. This monster is back. And he is hell bent on revenge, just going to work. One for, for Fidel and taking out the garbage here now with Sasha. He had a choice, embrace us or face us. He chose door number two, oh, I yeah. love it. He took the ladder, that's for sure. Look out from behind though, oh, Cabrera oh. clips the knee of the big man. Well now the odds just a little too great for even Big Nasty, TK. Yeah, the numbers game takes effect. You know he came out here with revenge on his mind. Maybe gonna fight fire with fire. But now look at this, just like a pack of jackals all over, Big Nasty. Well, Big Nasty clearly outnumbered here, and now looks like they're, they're trying to tie him up in the ropes. Wait a second, there's the homo in Nick Madrid. And this referee, Chris Massey, what's going on here? Do we have a six-man tag? Well, I don't know, you know, you can assume, but you know what happens when you do that. But I certainly hope so. Guys, I need a raise. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, forget about me, huh? Viva la revolution! Give me a break. Tell you what, wanna burn my eye? 
You want to threaten my career? Threaten my livelihood? Tell you what, there's three of us, there's three of you. What do you say to make this a six man tag match? Rejoined here in the broadcast position by Matt Stryker. Matt, I apologize that you had to be in the ring with these three. Oh, well, listen, I mean, it's part of my job. And, and the three you refer to, the revolution, they, they certainly are for real and they're legitimate. People might not agree with their political and, I guess, sociological views, but they have a right as much as anyone else. All right, so we make it official here. Six-man tag team action to kick things off here on Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Nick Madrid in there with... Well, Fidel Bravo, the newest member of the revolution. Yeah, what a turncoat. It's Fidel Bravo used to wear the red, white, and blue every yes. time he was out here, Matt. Fidel Bravo, a nice Jewish boy, David Schwartz from Beverly Hills, California, was almost brainwashed by the rhetoric of, of Sasha and Fidel. Yeah, certainly drinking the Kool-Aid. But right now, receiving a lot of punishment here from Madrid. Big monkey flip out of the corner. I like Nick Madrid. He looks like Chris Cornell from Soundgarden. I was, I was thinking more Kirk Hammett from Metallica. There you Maybe go. if those two got together. Into the cover now goes Madrid, looking for the win, only accounted to. And of course, the animosity on Eric Watts' part. Todd, you remember vividly, it was when the revolution blinded Eric Watts with a lit cigar into his eye. What a disgusting attack that was, one that we will never forget. And, and that begs the question, Matt. After that attack, that injury, this is vision at 100%. We'll see when he's in the ring. Well, we saw Eric Watts remove the eye patch on his way to the ring, and I'm sure that Eric has been cleared. Otherwise, he would not be standing on the apron waiting for oh. a tag from the hobo. Hang on. Going for the cover now. And Jeff, how about that? A gut wrench suplex. Seconds ago by the hobo. Some good fundamental wrestling. Hobo's biting him. I'll tell you what, it's great to see the hobo in such good spirits. We've seen him recently. He's been hitting the bottle a little too hard. Well, that helps. Hobo has meth teeth. Have you seen his teeth? I've, I've seen his oh teeth. I, I try to erase that memory. Eric Watts in there with hey, Fidel yeah. Bravo. Definitely has the size advantage here. And good thing for Eric Watts that the Hobo and Nick Madrid came out to help him out. Now this is personal. This is about Eric Watts' livelihood, feeding his family. The man standing across from Eric Watts tried to take that all away. Redemption. And what is this from Che Cabrera? What a cowardly activity there. Hey! Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I guess both eyes work just fine with Eric Watts. Bravo yeah. now off the top. He gets caught. Maybe going to go for a ride. Elevator going See down. Go. Hey. You two spy plane. And if you get that reference, good for you. Well, I'll tell you what, that strategy by Che Cabrera certainly backfired, didn't it, Matt? Yes, obviously. All right, well, now that that's cleared up, <laughs> the revolution on the outside, like you mentioned before, not rushing in, going to rethink their strategy. Can they get back into this matchup? Matt, if you were them, what would you do? Well, first, I would say not rushing in is funny because Sasha is <laughs> Very rushing. good. Listen, the thing about the revolution, again, you don't have to agree with their political views, but all three of them are credible inside the ring on their own and they are very dangerous as a trio. An axis of evil, if you will. That's a great point. The revolution, obviously a cohesive unit. Of course, we're not sure how Madrid, Hobo, and Eric Watts are gonna work together when the going gets tough. But what they have done, speaking of the revolution, is they have slowed the pace. They've nullified that advantage that we have going on and now back to a one-on-one -on -one here between the Hobo and Derevko. Let's see what yeah, happens. This triangle of terror known as the revolution will, will resort to any and all tactics. There's no Geneva Convention. There's no fair fighting rules. It's just basically what they want, wow. Wow, when they want. Derevko, what a great striker. Skilled in the art of Russian Sambo as he goes for the cover here. So he can grapple with the best of them as well. Makes the tag, so good teamwork being displayed here now by the Revolution. Cabrera now in there, and again, we're gonna see some double teaming from these guys. Again, as noted, great cohesive unit there. And Che Cabrera, you know, very impressive individual. He's been impressive since his debut, and now he's a man on a mission, a man of spreading rhetoric. Yeah, but a great athlete too, much to your point, Matt. Great elevation, 
on that dive. And look at look at Che Miguel Cabrera just watching the official and trying to take every last inch that he can. And do you think that they might try and isolate the hobo as a weak link? I, I think I've watched wrestling long enough to know that yes, that is what is going to happen. The last thing they want is the returning big nasty Eric Watts anywhere near the inside of that ring. So if they can cut it off and keep the hobo in there, maybe Bam. try and pick up the quick oh. win. win. Big slam by Fidel Bravo. You know, it's our second chance to see these guys in six-man tag team action. Last time, to me, Fidel seemed a little overzealous. Well, this Fidel Bravo has broken the hearts of his family. His mother, Mildred Schwartz, constantly tries to reach out. All the calls are intercepted by uh, Che Cabrera. It's just, it's, it's, it's brainwashing, and that's what the revolution tries to do. Big dive there by Fidel. Did not pay off. Trying to make the tag. Uh oh, look out! Can the hobo tag Come here? On. Oh, and he right. does! Here comes Big Nasty! That's Whoops. what we wanted to hey. see. Wait a second, sacrificial lamb there. Oh. oh! But Eric really wants to get his hands on Che, but he'll take Sasha as a proxy almost. Maybe he'll take whoever he can get his hands on. Look out here though, Fidel on the outside. What a little pest he is. Yeah, grab a hold of that mop. Bam! Now Madrid in there, Eric Watts taking care of Fidel Bravo at ringside. Madrid in with the drop kick, and Cabrera looks like he's Whoa. directing traffic. And Hobo is up and going, huh? Jack Daniels is a wonderful elixir. Oh, big time flapjack. Well, it might be Derevko, the one with the vodka hangover here. All out of sorts now to the outside as the Hobo chasing. Turn, turn, turn. Oh, in a second, roll up by Cabrera. Man. Got the tights. Brilliant, brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners of the match, the team of Shea Cabrera, Sasha Derevko, and Fidel Bravo, the Revolution. Well, Shea Cabrera sat at ringside, and I'll tell you what, guys, he was picking his spot. He was waiting for the moment, and he chose the perfect opportunity to steal the win. Sure did. Way more elusive than that cigar smoker, that rhetoric he spews, the revolution. And I'll tell you Victorious. something. Remember, the revolution are paid in US dollars, and that's the one time they don't seem to mind this country is when they're getting paid. But they're going to the window, the pay window, because of that man. Introducing first from Tranquil Meadows, Weighing 165 pounds, Thomas Namaste. Thomas Namaste. Is that, is that the artist formerly known as Tommy Misfit, Jeff? That is, enlighten that is, us here. That he looks the, like he's been enlightened. Enlighten us, He looks please. like Russell Brand. Yeah, Thomas Namaste. I, I hear he also goes by the nickname of just Thomas Day. Uh, but uh, I this... get it. Namaste, of course, the greeting amongst all. Now, Todd, do you do yoga? Because I heard your favorite pose is downward facing dog. Well, I, you know, I, I don't want to get into my personal life, Matt. You're sure, not good. a yogi. It's, it's good to be limber. Shh, shh, let's all find a place. Todd, that's not your place. Get your hand off my knee. Oh. Oh, if anything can kill a moment. And his opponent being led to ringside by Othello and Stu Stone of the Family Stone from Kansas City, Missouri, weighing 205 pounds. He is the main event, James Morgan. I'll tell you what, Stu Stone, definitely not someone I could see uh, in a Bikram yoga studio. Yeah, from meditate to the main event. Yeah. What do you think Morgan's making of this? Well, instead of meditate, Stu likes to medicate. And honestly, you can see the place that Thomas Day has gone. He can't even be disturbed. Well, Thomas Day is, is essentially immune to what's going on around him. This is an incredible place he's taken himself to, Matt. I could use some of that immunity myself. James Morgan instructing one of our lovely Lucas ladies on how to properly take care of his fine robes and linens and garments. He has found his uh, happy place here, not even mm. not even sweating the monster Othello walking around him here. I feel like uh, some Crosby, Stills, and Nash should be playing, and we should be swaying. Got out of town on a boat, southern island. No, nope, nope. You have a very good voice, Matt. Stay away. Will do. 
All right, well, Bell sounds, so we do have a matchup here. Now, all kidding aside, anyone that does a ton right. of yoga is going to be supple and is going to be very acrobatic, Look at that victory athletic. Roll. Whoa, I like this Thomas Day. Ooh, I liked this Thomas Day. Well, he took time to meditate up there. It was pretty impressive. Yes. Oh, ow. He's focused on the task at hand, but now they, they, they say, and I do a lot of DDP yoga, they say that the more muscle mass you have, the harder the yoga positions are. You'll notice Thomas Day's body is fit, but not bulky. And that's certainly gonna help him to try to absorb some of this, these blows. Well, now James Morton doing what he does best, and that's go to the arm and soften up his opponents for that cross face chicken wing. But my question is, how does Thomas Day find out that place where he has to get angry at his opponent? Listen, you have to have genuine disdain for your opponent in order, hang on. Morgan now goes for the cover to inflict damage. I'll tell you by experience, it's hard to wrestle a friend. It's hard to fight someone that you actually like because you take it easy. Oh, oh look at that flying arm breaker there by main event. And I'll tell you what, Thomas Day spending a lot of time on the mat, not the mat that he's liked so much as of late, that being the yoga mat, he is in trouble. Well, now Thomas Day fighting back, and that's a great point, Matt. You know, we're usually used to seeing this guy with tons of energy, and this is definitely a different individual here. He's laid back. Especially being here in California, you know, that, that tends to be the demeanor. But well, his ability to uh, be a little loosey-goosey limber, will that help him combat that cross-face chicken wing of James Morgan? What kind of limber? Lucy Goosey. Lucy Goosey. It's good talking Lucy to you guys. Goosey. You know, you said downward facing dog. <laughs> the Lucy Goosey is not a position. I it is, but she's I not here tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you what, maybe this calm demeanor of Tommy Missit, maybe it's gonna make him be able to conserve more energy for when he does hit those big moves, have a little more oomph behind him. Well, if you keep calling him Tommy Misfit, he might get upset. Uh, it's Thomas Stay. That is right, that is right, I stand corrected. It is Thomas Day, and, and he also has filthy feet. Look at the bottom of his feet. He yeah, doesn't wear shoes. Oh my gosh, my grandmother would yell at him. <laughs> Hard Irish whip into the corner, Dirty Thomas Day to his face. Arm. Oh yeah, nice. had the little effect. There it is, come on, I like this guy. Get going Thomas now. Thomas Day, yes. look at this. Uh -oh. Oh. Have a nice day into the Northern Lights. Ooh. But to your point there, Jeff, he was almost like an eco boost uh -oh, engine. There it is, there it is. Cross-face chicken wing by yep. Morgan. And hooks see, the legs. James has to really have that maneuver hooked in order to get a submission, which he did. A big win by James Morgan. Guys, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get a word from the main event in Stu. Right, don't come back too quickly. James, the main event. Morgan! All right, now that the A-team is together, you can <laughs> there talk. There we go. I love uh, it when a plan comes together. I like what Thomas Day is bringing, reinventing himself, trying to find a place, but you cannot ignore what Stu Stone has done with James Morgan, Othello, and the entire family Stone. Oh, no doubt. You want to talk about meditation, you want to talk about focus. James Morgan just stared daggers through his opponent the entire matchup, picks up the win, and our broadcast colleague, Jeff Risnick, will be standing by momentarily. Should be interesting. All right, James Morgan, Stu Stone, come on over here, guys. I, uh, big win there. Now, Stu, I, I hear that you have a, uh, a big announcement to make, something's going on. A big announcement to make, first of all, the same way he just took care of that no good hippie, he took care of that no good drunk Adam Pierce, who is done. As far as I'm concerned, as far as all these people are concerned, as far as Matt Stryker's concerned, as far as my mother Trudy who's watching is concerned, Adam Pierce is done. And that means, that this man right here is not only forever Scrap Daddy, but he is still and forever he will be the main event, James Morgan. It is only right, John Ian, to put this man in a title match. He deserves it, he's earned it, he's my best friend, and he is your next champion. Wait a second, wait a second. Cut the music, Mike Coughlin. I got more to say. The Family Stone is not just going for singles gold. No, 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 no. The Family Gold is what it's going to be called. 
because we're going after the tag team titles as well. When next week we become contenders, when Family Stone member Othello teams up with me, Stu Stone. Stu, Stu Stone, you're, you're getting in the ring. The tag, you're looking at the next tag chips right here. Family Stone, baby, live, live, live. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Stu Stone and Othello looking for tag team gold. Is this for the first time ever that Stu Stone is going to be getting in the ring? We'll be right back. Well, in an official capacity, he does have a heck of a moonsault. Introducing first, being accompanied to ringside by his sister Kylie from Stem, North Carolina, weighing 287 pounds, Hoss Hog. Well, this is Hoss Hog set for action, along, of course, with Kylie. And Hoss Hog, he's the quiet one of the bunch. So hang on a second, does that make Kylie's last name Hog? Is she Kylie Hog? Well, I think it's Sutton. Kylie Sutton. Hoss Hog Sutton. Hmm. Yeah, Hogs the middle name. Something about Hogs and Kylie. <laughs> All right. His opponent being accompanied by Hector Canales from the outer reaches of your mind, weighing 190 pounds of the somebody's Brian Weston. All right, well, from grab your partner, do -si do to whatever this grinding Brian Weston is doing, but rest assured, guys, in his mind, he's somebody. Listen, the nobodies curiously make me feel warm in my happy place. I don't know what it is. I'm still wrestling, no pun intended, with these feelings, but there's just a mood that comes about the arena, especially when Mr. Hector Canales, and you have to say his name like that at all times, is in the building. Oh, Hector he Canales is no, sure. No, 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 no. Who? Hector Canales. No, no. Hector Canales. Hector Canales? You try, Todd. Hector Canales. That's very good, baby. Now you go. Hector Canales? Hector Canales, baby. I love your shoes. Terrible. Your, you should terrible. wear big shoes. Okay, no more fun. Muy malo, muy malo. And Haas Hogg and Weston locking up there. But guys, Hector Canal is so encouraging of Brian Weston, now trying to make him feel like he's a somebody. Yes, of course, the nobodies were, were almost torn apart at the seams when, when Pinky was, was unceremoniously tossed out. Now Pinky on his own and trying to find his own way. And Hector Canales is taking the nobodies to a special place. Well, they certainly made a statement dethroning their former leader. There we go. Watch that there. Watch that. Oh, look at that. There you go. 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 Oh. Mm. Prison Real. shower. Brian, Brian Weston, I thought he was just, again, just messing around with Hang the referee. On. Cover here. Into the cover goes Weston after those rapid fire punches by Conales. This Weston has a strategy. And this Weston, I want to make more pinfall attempts because every time he does, uh, Kylie jumps up and down. Well, and also f forces the bigger man, Haas mm. Hawk Sutton, to have to expel that energy. This match were to go into deep water, certainly Look at could you be applying to psychology to this. <laughs> Good for you. I'm, I'm trying my best. Into the cover, one of those covers you asked for, although very unorthodox Whoa. cover at that. Oh, Whoa, wow. Wow. Well, he went Whoa. for it. Subtlety, not uh, one of his gifts. I apparently. would pay to see this, by the way. Well, Hector, Hector Canales now coming on to Kylie. <laughs> this is creepy. <laughs> Take it easy. I'm done. I finished a while ago. <laughs> Weston in firm control of the matchup, though, now, and using that rope to choke out. Oh, and big Haas Hog Sutton, who's you know now going to be gasping for air yet again. And as far as the pecking order here at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, this match is crucial because whomever wins this match will certainly start to get the eye of the championship committee. Pinfall attempt again. And there's so many opportunities here in championship wrestling from Hollywood. Of course, the champion Scorpio Sky, the champion Joey Ryan. There's just many different accolades one can achieve. Cover. You gonna work with us here, Mr. No, that's Resnick? That's exactly correct. I just, I gotta tell you guys, I am so creeped out by, by Brian West, and I almost wish our table was somewhere else where I didn't have to make eye contact with him. Meanwhile, it looks like Kylie might be interested in Hector Banales. Oh, which, come on, man. You don't think she's really interested in Hector? Which, which section in Craigslist would you find Hector Canales and Kylie? Is that I, like I, a I, missed connections, rants and raves? I don't, for I don't sale. think I'm going to get into this debate. There's oh, nice. Brian Weston up to the top rope. 
Very wow. agile as Weston. Ooh, landed hard on his own coccyx bone. Uh oh, excuse me. Into the cover now goes Weston. Now, here's what I'm noticing. Mr. Weston is not hooking a leg. He's almost too wrapped up in his lifestyle to, to, to execute fundamental proper wrestling techniques, and it, it's upsetting me. Well, you have to try and capitalize. Not too often does somebody take this big man oh. down with a single shot, not with a senton on the mat. Everything coming up Weston right now. Yep. Can he keep the full court press going? And Hoss Hogg has drank enough whiskey to float a battleship around. It's a tough man. Oh, don't. What was don't, that? Don't. Covers. Hoss Hogg needs to get up onto his feet now and start beating somebody up after that. Come on, Haas, don't worry about the fans, worry about the paycheck, worry about Kylie. Punch this guy in the face. Please just beat him so I don't have to watch him touch himself anymore. Seriously. Hey, hey, some of, okay. Big Haas Hog Sentinel leaves his feet. There's the cowbell. Born fed, it oh. may be supper time. Go for the cover, baby. And once again, uh, Hector he notices Canales. Hector hitting on Kylie. Oh, wait, he's, he's got Kylie and let go ooh, of her, Hector. Ooh, no, 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 no. You want to see this? Kind of. Come on, Matt. Yeah, but the real thing here, what oh. a distraction. Uh-oh. Hoss Hog sat out of the way. Oh, oh, the country. Yeehaw. Don't ever Hold do that, that again. Over. Go for the cover. Here we go. Oh. One, two. Yeah, it's summer time. And your winner of the match, Hoss Hog. What a lariat by Hoss Hog turning Brian Weston inside out. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hot pursuit. Hang on. I think let's that's what Matt let's, is. Let's just Kylie watch Kylie. Let's suit. just watch her. Let's just, uh, here we go. She's holding her skirt down. Ma Mama May taught her manners. What's that? Look at that. Well, I don't think Hoss Hogg is much of a dancer with the ladies, no, man. But, but now, now I, I like to be very ethnic. And any time I do a match with the Hogs, now I'm going to talk like this. And anytime I say Hector Canales, I'm going to talk like this. I but think that's if good. If I mix the two, it's crazy, because then I was like Hector Canales. And that's just weird. All right, let's get back to a big win here by Hoss Hog. Sutton spun him around like a big piece of meat on the rotisserie. Mm. And now it's time for a little hoedown. The following contest is a number one contendership match for the Hollywood Heritage Championship. If Ryan Taylor loses, he's fired from the company. Introducing first from Charlestown, Massachusetts, weighing 325 pounds, Mikey O'Shea. High stakes main event matchup here on Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. We've seen the evolution of this man, Mikey O'Shea, from the beginning of his career right here on this program. Tonight, if he gets the win, he earns himself a title shot. And his opponent, from Long Beach, California, weighing 212 pounds, Ryan Taylor. And here we see Ryan Taylor wearing the Heritage Heavyweight title belt that he absconded. He has no business wearing that title. Just putting a black eye on it. But we talked about everything that O'Shea has to gain. Talk about what this man has potentially to lose in this matchup, Jeff. Well, that's Jeff, right. Jeff. Please educate me here. Ryan has stolen this title, is that correct? That's right, Ryan Taylor came to ringside, stole the title right out from under Scorpio Sky, left the building, still in possession of it. But now, if he is to lose this matchup, he's got what he wanted. He's got a number one contendership match. But if he loses, he is gone. He is fired. The thing is, Matt, is he believes he is the Hollywood Heritage Champion. He being Ryan Taylor. Okay, so in, in his mind, Ryan Taylor is, is almost sociopathic in believing that he is indeed the champion, where there's the true Heritage Champion is, in fact, Scorpio Sky. Got it. Hey, 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 give me one second here. The grappler, a legend across the globe. Ryan Taylor, I know a few people have been calling you a thief. They said you stole that heavyweight belt. That exactly. And the champion. I am the heritage champion. Well, I'm not here to shake your hand. You know why? Because I agree. Nobody pins you, brother. I've seen it, okay? I've seen it. Let me take a look at that thing. Let me see that thing. That's beautiful. You deserve to have this heavyweight belt. I don't care what they say, brother. You're not a thief. You won it fair and square. I got you. Stole it. Hey, brother. Oh, you said 
So Grappler is endorsing what? Grand Theft? Well, who is Grappler to make these claims? Oh, okay, you're never gonna see this. Well, I'm not sure what the laws are here in the state of California. Hang on, there's Miss Danielle. Hey, what are you doing? That, that is not your job here, okay? Not in my job. Not your time either. How do you, know, you think you get the job? This guy won that title. This is not your job here, and I am here to tell you that, okay? Come on, referee, come on. Listen, right, so we're gonna have a match here. It is not a title match. She's got the belt where it belongs. Listen, I need you out of the ring so we can have this match. Let's go, out of the ring, and I'm gonna ring that bell. Come on, let's go, out of the ring. Come on, let's go. I need you out right now. One, two, three, four, ring that bell. A fine and a suspension would be in the grappler's future if he did not listen to our official, but an interesting thing going on here at ringside. Well, Danielle taking back possession of the Heritage title. Of course, it, it should be in the possession of Scorpio Sky. Well, Danielle, the assistant, of course, to championship wrestling from Hollywood matchmaker John Ian. So, yep, so like so you said, doing the right thing here. So that action comes from the championship wrestling from Hollywood main office. That's right, of okay. course. Yeah, they're, they're the ones making the decision, and they're now going to have the title. And you have to think about this, and I, back to my point, I don't know what the laws are here in California, but any possession that is over twenty dollars or $30,000 would then become grand theft. And I happen to know for a fact that the championship wrestling from Hollywood title is well over that amount. That's why the board wants it back in their possession. It's, it's not about fairness, it's about money. Well, and Ryan Taylor, again, regardless of what just happened, ladies and gentlemen, if Ryan Taylor loses this matchup, he's fired. Yes. That's huge. And these two men cannot be any more different. Mikey O'Shea, growing up in the streets of Boston, used to hang out in boxing gyms and pool halls as early as the age of seven. Imagine what this young man grew up watching and seeing. Never knew his father, was raised by his mother's boyfriend. That in and of itself can cause some psychological damage. This is a tough young man with a lot of anger talking about Mikey O'Shea. Well, everything you're talk to, but talking about speaks to his style. He's a brawler, he's a bruiser, he's a heavy hitter. You know, nothing fancy about Mikey O'Shea. He gets the job done. And of course, Ryan's background is an entirely different story. Todd, elaborate. Oh, an incredible striker to be sure, and a, and a former champion as well. Of course, in his mind, he will say that he's current reigning and defending. So you kind of have a classic battle here between striker and grappler, because O'Shea really more effective once he gets his hands on you, when he can lift you up, use that big body and slam you down. And Brian, of course, grew up a privileged, privileged life. He had a housekeeper and a nanny when he was a child. He went to private school. He was chauffeured everywhere he went. Teen tours, summer camps, cruises. Two entirely different men in the ring right now. Well, and that's why he believes that if he wants something, Bam. it should be his. It's entitlement. It's a problem with the youth of today. Oh, Shay, you want to talk about nannies? He's trying to put them down for a three-second nap. What a huge opportunity this is for both men. Title, opportunity, hanging in the balance. But for O'Shea, I talked about it. When we first saw him on this program, Jeff, you'll remember, he was basically a hired, mus a hired muscle, oh. hired gun. Hired now mustard. Right here, well, he put some mustard on that shot. Now he's one step away from a huge title opportunity. All right, Mikey O'Shea, the journey that we've seen from him in this company is unbelievable, and now he's one match away from getting a shot at the biggest prize in sports today. And Mikey O'Shea's entire life could change becoming champion. The checks increase, your travel is paid for, your hotel rooms are accommodated, people offer to take you out for meals, you get commercial endorsements. That's why oh. Scorpio Sky needs the championship around his waist. It's his, it's his accessory to his charisma, Scorpio Sky. Right now, O'Shea fighting his fight but oh. there is the quickness, the agility of Taylor, who ties wow. the big man up. Beautiful single leg pick, and now look at this. Maybe going to use the ring to his advantage. All oh. right to that post. The inside of Mikey O'Shea's knee. And that's why strategy on Ryan's part, because Mikey O'Shea can't utilize his near 300-plus girthy frame if he can't get off the mat. Speaking of girthy frames, Todd. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. I, I've been trying to slim down, but I guess. Oh, again. And you know, Mikey O'Shea, as Matt pointed out, a lot of weight on those joints. Ryan Taylor, again, Todd, great technical wrestler. Has oh. a strategy, goes after it, and now punishing the knee, the leg of O'Shea. O'Shea, at this point, might as well be on a dissection pan. He is getting picked apart. And look at this, Taylor, 
just taking his time. And this Slow, is what, methodical. What Ryan's doing is he's letting the pain throb and resonate in his opponent. Most times, young wrestlers will go too quickly when their opponent's injured. You need to let your opponent feel that pain and their mind starts to wonder, did I tear my ACL? Am I ever gonna wrestle again? How am I gonna get out of this match? Now their mind is elsewhere and now you can attack. That's a great point, Matt. You mean that Ryan Taylor's playing basically psychological mind games with him? Yes. That was so much on the line here for O'Shea as well. Taylor has worn championship gold. Ooh. So much oh, on the line here oh, for O'Shea. Nice. Oh my gosh, just broke him down. That's the way you do it. If you ran into Mikey O'Shea at the bus stop and you were about to fight him, would you try to punch him in the face? Maybe once or twice, and if the kid's still standing there, you take a knee out. Mikey O'Shea certainly cannot hit a gunslinger slam from this position. Just really at the mercy right now of the lethal striking ability oh. of Taylor. Oh, look at this. Oh! oh now, what was goodness. that about, Matt? Again, it's psychology and ego. Ryan wants all eyes on him. Blatant disrespect as Taylor goes for the cover. Oh. It shows you Mikey gets his shoulder off the mat at one. No matter how much pain Mikey is in, Mikey understands the importance of this matchup. The winner will become the number one contender to the Heritage Championship. And if Ryan Taylor loses, well, Ryan Taylor will be fired. Mikey O'Shea lives and breathes professional wrestling. Everything he is about is professional wrestling. He will not oh. quit, Matt. Matt. Really wrenching back. Thought it was going to be a spinning toll hold. Then it's a modified Indian deathlock or Native American deathlock, depending on where we are in the PC world. Ryan Taylor wrenching in. Mikey O'Shea, good thing he got the ropes there. You know, again, I don't see Mikey O'Shea tapping out. That's my personal opinion. But again, he could pass out in a hold like that. That's right. And it says a lot about Mikey O'Shea to swallow his pride and reach for the ropes, which forces a break. Again, the importance of this match is the main story. O'Shea, oh, is that late? Wow. Gonna hold up here. Adrenaline can do wonders. But look at that, right out the back door. Oh. Clips the leg again. The strategy here of Taylor working perfectly. You know, we talk about the speed and agility of Mikey O'Shea. For a big man, it's incredibly impressive. But in this match, we're not getting to see it because of the strategy of Taylor. And how about the endorsement from the grappler early on? That definitely did wonders for Ryan's confidence. Oh, God. I can't. This hurts to watch because I've been in this hold before. Figure four leg lock with the oh, post oh, in the oh. middle. Look at the position here. Look at. O'Shea trying to hold on to that second rope to alleviate some. Oh, and you can see him gritting his teeth, just desperately trying to hold yeah. on as anyone that's ever wrestled a match is just cringing right now because of the pain that that causes. Not a legal hold, of course. The referee has no. to break it up, but the damage done at this point, Matt. You know when you crack your knuckles? You know that feeling right before they're about to pop, that, that you feel that air escape? That's what you feel in your knee. You feel your knee is about to pop, about to pop, and it won't pop. The pain is excruciating. And Ryan Taylor is loving every second of it. Look at this, just, just slapping O'Shea, smiling. Oh, oh my goodness! Where did that come from? <laughs> and I can tell by the way that Ryan fell. Normally you will fall face first, but when you are knocked out on your feet, gravity forces you down on your back. Ryan Taylor may be out right now. Taylor, those eyes look to roll back in his head as well. O'Shea looking to defeat his opponent, defeated gravity in that exchange. Desperation in Zaguri, but can he get back to his feet? Can he capitalize here in our main event? Yeah, Ryan Taylor's eyes are glassy. He's not all there. Oh, Whoa. O'Shea charging and strikes. Notice O'Shea not moving much, letting Taylor come to him in the middle of the ring. That's the best strategy he can have. That leg has been damaged. Sidewalk slam. Come on, cover him, Mikey. Oh, here we go. Kick out there by Taylor, who I think went for the eye as well. Anything to get the big body of O'Shea off of him. So much on the line here. Mikey O'Shea now measuring Ryan Taylor. What's he gonna do here? But can he close the gap quick enough? Oh. With that injured oh. knee. Oh, what a lethal spin kick there by Taylor. What's he going for? Oh, nice, wow. nice, this is it, this is it. What a beautiful cradle. Oh. Oh. Watch out, oh, oh, what a spine buster. Quickly Covers into the it. cover, that could do it here, gentlemen, no. no. How close was that? Just milliseconds away from a new number one contender and the career of Ryan Taylor being over. And notice whose head's higher, Mikey O'Shea. 
Mikey's adrenaline is starting to pick up now. If Mikey can keep this momentum going, we may see a new number one contender. But he's moving so slow, Matt, you can see the match has taken his toll. But he's back up first, and that's all he needs as he starts to stalk oh. his opponent. Like Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers, O'Shea just keeps moving forward. Both men trading here. And this right here, this is a war, a battle of attrition. Look at this. Oh, wow. Rolls through. Beautiful oh, back transition. Back to the injured leg. Beautiful transition into the half crab submission hold. Oh. Ryan Taylor knowing just what he's doing, but can Mikey O'Shea hold on? The placement of Ryan Taylor's rear is what makes this hold so much more effective. Notice he's sitting almost on the small of the back, the top of the glutes. Again, perfect oh. placement. Drags him back towards the center of the ring. And think here, guys, too. The residual damage. Indian Deathlock, figure four on the yep. post. Now this. The tendons of Mikey O'Shea's knees are certainly compromised. Well, now Mikey O'Shea like a wounded animal in that ring. I'm sorry, ligaments. And don't look at that shot. Well, if the left one won't get you, the right one will. Look at the oh. power. Just dumps O'Shea. Back of the head into that turnbuckle. Oh. Scissor kick. Down goes O'Shea, just went down in a heat. He Could might be, be knocked out here. Here's the cover. Oh, oh no hook of the leg, Ryan. I'll tell you, if Grappler can get with this young man, he could hang on there. Could this be code red cross arm breaker? Could it be? It doesn't seem to be that Ryan has it applied perfectly. If Ryan can pop his hips up, he can dislocate the elbow. What irony that would be. Well, it's an interesting strategy by Taylor after working the legs this yes. entire match, now going to the arm, the shoulder. Well, you'll notice how Mikey needs his legs to get back vertical. O'Shea was able to clasp the hands, though, and take away the pressure, and now he's in the dominant position. Uh-oh, look out here. Thought maybe that nice, Taylor going to work up for a triangle. Good, good. Can't get his legs around the zoftig shoulder area, the girthy midriff, if you will, and of at Mikey this, O'Shea. At this point in the matchup, when these two guys, they've been battling their sweaty. Whoa. Is it hard to hook in a submission yes. hole? Oh, look out here. Oh, oh, my God. How does spine not come out of his body? Covers. No. And again, Ryan needs someone like the grappler out there at ringside right now to be shouting encouragement, maybe pull Ryan out, let him regroup re, uh, and, and collect his thoughts right now. Both men down, both men starting to stir. Talk about Matt, if you will, that huge impact on the tailbone. Does that just send shock waves through your whole body? Right up through your body, right up through your neck. It makes your fingers tingle. And again, it goes back to you start to get scared. You start to question your own mortality. Am I paralyzed? Am I ever going to be able to walk again? That's what goes through your mind. Then you look up and you see this. I take oh. the snap out of those kicks as well. Oh, Low oh. bridge. Oh, he landed. All the weight of O'Shea down on the knee. Whoops. Taylor now. Cartwheel. Look at the agility by Ryan in a kick. This guy is an absolutely amazing athlete. Now, he, what happens on a count out here? What if both men are counted out? What happens to the number one contendership? What happens to Ryan Taylor's job? I think in the case of a count out, I think we just have a draw and Ryan Taylor will still be employed here. I don't like the way that sounds. Let's hope that doesn't happen. No, we want to see a winner. We want to see who's next in line to vie for the title to take on Scorpio Sky. But you're right, we cannot lose. The fact here that if Taylor loses this match, guys, he is done. And the thing with Scorpio Skies, he's a world-class athlete, a world-class champion. Oh, wait a second, guys, watch out! O'Shea's got him! A whole lot of heart on display here. Wow. Oh, oh. buckle bomb! Yeah, turnabout's fair play. He hit the corner earlier. Big choke slam there. Just spikes Taylor. But oh, look at cover. this, not able to go for the immediate cover. The legs gave out on him. Now rolls into the pinfall. Mm. No! Oh. I'm telling you, Mikey didn't hook a leg, and it almost seems like Mikey cannot get chest to chest because when he rolls over, he feels that injured knee. The left knee of Mikey O'Shea is the story right now. Ryan Taylor caught a break there. If O'Shea was able to immediately cover, hook the leg, like you said, Matt, this one could have been over. Right, we're seeing O'Shea with his explosive offense, but again, can't capitalize soon enough. And again, look at him hobble around that ring. He is, again, he is a wounded animal, but he's looking for the victory right here. O'Shea seeming to signal here that it could be the beginning of the end. Can he complete it here? Can he take one more step towards his destiny? Look out here, Gunslinger! But no! beautiful counter by Taylor and goes right back to the leg. Taylor looking for perfect oh my circle! Goodness! 
Took the big man up and over. How in the world did he execute that? Go for a cover. You're right again, Matt. Very slow to make the cover there. Now oh, what is he this doing? This is ego. This has been Ryan's enemy his entire life himself. Oh, you had the match won. But no, no, Ryan wants a submission. Ryan wants... Well, now he's got the sharpshooter, but Christian Cole at ringside, what's he doing here? Taylor's got the arm and the leg hooked. Give me that bit. Christian Cole now has a hold of that Heritage title. Well, Ryan Taylor believes the title's his. Watch out, there's Sky. There's Sky. Oh! oh! Big knee strike. Referee didn't see it. Taylor is out. Well, the referee is tending to Mikey O'Shea doing his job, but let's talk about. Scorpio Sky back in possession of his, the Heritage, the Hollywood Heritage title. Danielle doesn't seem too happy about that. Well, he's the man that holds the gold. Scorpio Sky is the best wrestler in championship wrestling from Hollywood. And that is why he is champion. I think Danielle upset that he, he interfered in this matchup. But guys, I'll tell you, this game of musical titles is over with. Sky has a title, but not before he played a song on the head of Ryan Taylor with that pinpoint knee strike. Referee Rick Knox making a count, nine. it's up to nine! And he just beats the count there, gentlemen. Well, Ryan Taylor signaling for the end. He looks a little loopy, though, guys. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Good swinger! This time, it was fully loaded, not shooting blanks, and O'Shea wins! Your winner of the match, and number one contender to the Hollywood Heritage Championship, Mikey O'Shea! Guys, I don't want to put a damper on this, but you have to give an assist. Due to pre-match stipulations, Ryan Taylor must leave championship wrestling from Hollywood. That's right, Scorpio Sky, the impetus, the reason this has happened here, attacking Ryan Taylor outside of the ring. He is now fired, he is gone. Meanwhile, Mikey O'Shea, your new number one contender. Okay, now, when does Ryan have to leave? Does his employment terminate right now? Congrats to Mikey O'Shea, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what happened to the belt. Johnny, he just left me a charge, and I'm just trying to do my best here. And he just, he just took the belt. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Ray Taylor. I'm sorry. Is that how she got her job? That official? That's official. Security! Oh, security. she looks confused and troubled. Referees, I'm so so Ryan is fired, and now me, the officials must me. escort so Ryan so Taylor sorry. from the premises. So this answers your question, Matt. When does the firing take place? When does it go into effect? So, right now. So the checks sorry. stop today. Right now. Look at Ryan. Well, he might indeed be crying, Ryan, but you talked about Matt. It's just desperation here by Ryan Taylor. He talked about the fact that Scorpio Sky had played a hand in the victory for O'Shea, but he played a huge hand in, in, in Taylor leaving the company. Yeah, but Ryan Taylor has lived his entire life getting everything that he wanted. And now for the first time ever, Ryan Taylor is not in control of his own destiny. And you can see the spoiled brat face that Ryan has. Ryan Taylor looks absolutely distraught beside himself. And again, in large part due to Scorpio Sky interfering in the matchup. Ryan Taylor is gone from championship wrestling from Hollywood. Oh, and Mikey O'Shea is the number one contender to the Heritage title.